Hey Rock Hounds. Today I want to share my rock and mineral collection with you guys. People often ask me uh, what my collection looks like and um, are curious about it. So I just thought, you know, it'd be cool to share it with you guys. I think most rock collectors are familiar with the three main classifications of rocks. Sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. And so that's kind of how I have some of my rocks arranged. These are some of, some of my sedimentary rocks, many of which I found, some of which I purchased. Banded iron formation. It's amazing. Jasper uh, interbedded with hematite. It's an iron ore. Mud ball concretion filled with calcite. This stuff fluoresces really cool. These are all concretions back here. This is a hematite concretion. Iron oxide. There's a shale ball with some pyrite crystals. This is a cool specimen from China where the pyrite is actually encrusting in the sedimentary bands and layers of the shale. So that's pretty cool. Fossilized raindrops. Blue halite. Evaporites are a type of sedimentary rock. So salt beds, potash, and um, lots of other types of minerals grow when a lake bed or an in, uh, inland sea evaporates. So winter stone is a form of rhyolite, but it has these cement bands, Lisa Gang bands on them. So that's why this rock shows up on my sedimentary rock, uh, ledge, even though technically it's a rhyolite, but it has sedimentary features that are quite interesting. So this is chalk. Calcium carbonate. Archean butterstone is more of a metamorphic rock than a sedimentary rock because it's been serpentinized. But inside these laminations are tiny microfossils that record very early life forms on Earth. And so I like to put it in the sedimentary pile just because it still retains those features of the original sediment. Ripple marks in sandstone. In fact, there's a septarian nodule or this is like a mud ball that got infiltrated with calcite. Some pipe stone. This is sulfur crystallization in a limestone. Sulfur is often associated with volcanism, but in this case, it's not. Metamorphic minerals and rocks form under temperature and pressure regimes deep in the earth. They can also form from contact metamorphism when uh, magma intrudes and starts cooking the rocks around it. So there's some really interesting rocks here. This is called garnet eclogite, and it is what happens to basalt, seafloor basalt, when it goes down the chute in a subduction zone and gets metamorphosed. So basalt looks like this after metamorphism. There's a small scale fold. This rock doesn't look like anything special, but it actually is really cool. This is called migmatite, and the areas of white are where there was partial melting. So the metamorphism progressed to the point of partially melting the rock, and you had these little pockets of magma, and then the rock was exhumed and solidified. So even though it doesn't look like that interesting, it's really interesting geologically. Garnet peridotite. Garnets are one of the most common 
minerals that you'll find in both igneous and metamorphic rocks. If there's aluminum and silica and the conditions are right, you'll get garnets. This is garnet amphibolite. Prenite. This is called hexagonite from the Governor Talc Mine in New York. Garnets. This is a piece of starlight garnet schist from the Pickerys Mountains in New Mexico. And it's really interesting because some of the minerals actually show evidence of retrograde metamorphism. Starlight. This is also known as a fairy cross. Another common mineral in metamorphic rocks. Jade. Kyanite. This is chrysotile, a type of asbestos. It has these tiny little fibers. And that's what makes it so dangerous for people who work in asbestos. This is an amphibole crystal in a, in a schist. Another type of metamorphic rock. There's some nice folds in a schist right there. This mineral is called chair white. It only comes from one place in the world, and that's in Siberia. This is another sample of starlight garnet schist. This dark greenish black mineral is called serpentine. There's various minerals that are classified as serpentine. <clears throat> tourmaline, term, black tourmaline crystals in schist. And over here is serpentinite. Another type of metamorphic rock. This is called a tigmatic fold and it shows compression of the rock when it was in a plastic state. So it was hot enough to be like a silly putty consistency when this was formed. So these are igneous minerals and rocks and they're either formed by volcanism or by the intrusion of magma and the cooling of that magma at depth. So of course, people are familiar with volcanic products. This is olivine basalt from Hawaii. This is a rhyolite lava flow. Andesite, porphyritic andesite, big crystals of feldspar in there. This is a piece of welded tuff that I polished. You also have pegmatites, which are like granite, except for that the crystals get much bigger. And usually there's some interesting mineralization that happens. So this is what pegmatite looks like. There's a big crystals of muscovite, potassium feldspar, quartz, and then there's this big tourmaline in there. Pegmatites are the source for some of the world's best gemstones. Dravite tourmaline. This is a pegmatite mineral from Australia. Cyanite. This is an intrusive igneous rock. So your countertops that are granite are usually some type of magma or even metamorphic gneiss. The crystals get big when the magma cools slowly underground. The crystals are small when the material erupts and cools quickly. Olivine is one of the, olivine also known as peridot in its gem, qual, in its gem form, 
um, it's common in in mafic igneous rocks. This is a mantle xenolith from Kilbourne Hole in southern New Mexico. Basically, mantle rocks got entrained in the basalt magma as it came up from the mantle, and when that magma interacted with the water table, it flashed to steam and blew out a large hole called a mar. And these peridot bombs are all over the edges of that hole down in southern New Mexico. You can't collect this stuff anymore. It's protected land now. Red crust bombs from California. Feldspar crystals. These are actually altered. When igneous rocks cool really quickly at the surface, they can form glass. So here's a piece of basalt, vesicular basalt. It's got little holes from the gas that was trapped in it when it erupted. And if it cools slow enough, you get rock. If it cools quickly, you get glass. Basaltic glass is called tacolite. And this is a piece of a lava toe. And you can see it has this vitreous edge and that's the part that cooled quickly and on the inside it's more like a rock where it cooled more slowly. So basalt glass is tacolite, rhyolite glass is obsidian. It's all about the cooling rate. This is phonolite, erupted phonolite lava from a volcano in Antarctica. Chinese writing stone, which is a fine-grained basalt with large plagioclase crystals in it. That's just a piece of hydrated obsidian known as perlite. Topaz crystals in a tuff. Tuff, also known as ignimbrite, is the result of very violent volcanism when the magma explosively erupts and then hot avalanches of ash and gas and rock race down the sides of the volcano and then where they come to stop you get a tuff deposit. This is welded tuff, partially welded tuff. A lot of the crystals in here are broken from the violence of the eruption. But you can get crystals like topaz growing once the hot ash comes to a stop, minerals can form. There's a flow banded rhyolite tuff, Apache tears, which are obsidian, and labradorite. Labradorite is a, well, all feldspars make up a lot a large amount of the minerals in igneous rock. So it's associated with intrusion and volcanism. And you can see it has this beautiful adular essence. Moonstone is a type of feldspar. This is also a type of feldspar called amazonite. Similar to Kilbourne Hole, except for the mantle xenoliths in this case came out in a slow moving lava flow that actually crystallized quickly. So it's very fine grained. But this is what the mantle under Arizona looks like. This, the green peridot. Some of the best peridot in the world comes from this lava flow, San Carlos Reservation in Arizona. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and stay tuned for part two. Thank you.